at the Lutheran Church uh, this Tuesday morning at 6.30 before work. It'll be just fruitful time there. Then same thing uh, Tuesday night for the ladies. There is a ladies ice cream social happening here at church, here at Trailhead at 7 p.m. If you'd like to be a part of that or bring something for that, you can sign up to do so at the Welcome Center as you leave. So if you're a man, breakfast on Tuesday. If you are a lady, there is an ice cream social happening here at 7 p.m. on Tuesday night. Last thing I want to put before you is there is a new member class happening two weeks from today on June 26th. So if you are interested in becoming a member or just hearing what that looks like here at Trailhead, you can sign up for that member class. Lunch will be provided. We'd love to have you stick around after church two weeks from now on June 26th. All right, grab a Bible with me. Um, We're going to go to Psalm 19 this morning for our call to worship. Psalm 19, if you need a pew Bible there in front of you, you can find that on page 456, 456. We'll read just a chunk of Psalm 19 together once you're there. These will be on the screen for you as well. All right, Psalm 19, we're going to start in verse 7 and read through verse 11. Verse 7 says this, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Verse 11, moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Let's pray together this morning. Well, Father in heaven, we do pray um, for the reality that we just read. Um, We pray that more and more we would see that your ways, your word, your rules are just so good for us. They're sure, they're right, they're pure, more to be desired than gold, even much fine gold. So, Lord, would you do that among us today? Would we see that clearly? Would you give us a taste uh, for the Lord today? We pray that you would be worshipped well. 
open our eyes to your word. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to sing worship this morning. Would you stand with us? We're going to start by singing forever this morning. To Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. stretched on his love endures forever for the life that's been reborn his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise sing praise The setting sun, His love endures forever, and by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Feet. 
eternal calls to us at the cross. I will not boast in wealth or might or human wisdom's Rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other. My soul is satisfied in Him alone. To wonder, see that I confess. My worth and my unworthiness, my value fixed, my ransom paid at the cross. I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other. My soul is satisfied in Him alone. And I rejoice in my Redeemer, greatest treasure, wellspring of my soul. I will trust in Him, no other. My soul is satisfied. In him Is he worthy? Let's sing it as one voice this morning. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you see it all made new we do it's all creation crony it is is a new creation coming it is is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst. It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of it? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone holy? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He has made his root and the Lamb who died to rest on the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Of our blessing and honor and glory, is He worthy of me? He is. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move? among us, He does, 
Sent us Jesus our Messiah Hope forever those he loves He does Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does Is anyone worthy To break the seal and open the scroll, the Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's fruit and the Lamb of God to rest on the slave from every people and tribe, every nation and tongue. He has made us a kingdom and praise to God to reign with the sun. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of our blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Good morning, church. Did did you happen to catch did you happen to catch the words in that second song? There's there's a phrase that was particularly striking to me as we were singing it here this morning. Two wonders here. That I confess my worth and my unworthiness. Uh, think about that just for a moment with me. This isn't, this isn't part of my sermon. This is free, okay? But just think about that with me for a moment. Two wonders here that I confess. My worth, I, I've got great worth. We have great worth. If we are in Jesus Christ, we were created in his image, right, in the image of God, we've got great worth, but we also need to acknowledge that we are unworthy. We're unworthy of his love. We're we're unworthy of what he did for us, right? We were the guilty ones. He was the innocent one. He gave his life so that we could live. That, that, that just struck me as we were singing it this morning. Two wonders here, I confess, my worth and my unworthiness. My value fix, my ransom paid at the cross. Are you trusting in that truth today? I said, are you trusting in that truth today? I pray that every one of us are. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mark Krolofs, one of the pastors here. I just wanted to say thank you to Pastor Clay for proclaiming the word clearly and faithfully last week. Thanks, Clay. Thank you to all of you for praying for us while we were on our mission trip to Mexico. We just got back Tuesday night. Still adjusting to 
being back home, it's about 30 degrees cooler here. So that's a little bit of an adjustment. We had a, we had a fantastic trip. We're looking forward to telling you more about that next week. Thank you to Eric and Lacey Forey for joining us on that trip. Truly, truly, just an incredibly blessed time. This morning, I'm going to read our text for us, and I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 4. As most of you are aware, we, we did begin a new series, a new sermon series last week called The Parables of Jesus. Pastor Clay began talking about building on the rock from the book of Matthew chapter 7. We're going to be skipping around the Gospels as we work our way through this series. But today's today's parable is from the book of Mark chapter 4. I'm going to be reading these brief verses 26 through 29 for you. Then we'll pray. Then we will dig into this text and and see what it holds for us. So the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 26. It says this, and this is Jesus speaking. It says, and he said, the kingdom of God is is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day. And the seed sprouts it and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Would you pray with me now as we continue to worship the Lord together this morning? Dear Father, we praise you for the truth that we've already been able to sing to each other. And dear Father, we praise you for these truths that are straight from your word. Dear Father, that are so good for us to be reminded of. Dear Father, it's so good for us to be reminded today of our worth that's found in Christ but then for us to stand in awe of our unworthiness as well. But we know that our value is fixed. Our ransom has been paid. If we are in Christ, it's been paid at the cross. So, dear Father, we worship at your throne today with this truth in mind, knowing that you are a holy God And we are sinners in need of your grace, which you give us so freely through Christ. Dear Father, we pray that that, that we wouldn't just take that truth for granted, but that we would be struck with it again. Dear Father, the price that you paid, the price that your son paid, that we could be reconciled to you. Dear Father, as we come to you this morning, we come with lots of requests, especially in regards to this church body. Dear Father, this morning we pray for Mike and Renee Banks. Dear Father, as Renee has melanoma, dear Father, we pray for the procedures that will be done for her in the next number of weeks. Dear Father, would you be... Would you be ministering to her? Would you be healing to her, Lord, even now? Dear Father, we pray for Wilma Wortman, who has a procedure on her heart this coming Wednesday. Dear Father, would you be filling her with your peace, even as she waits for that to take place? Dear Father, we pray for Brian Sapala as he is struggling in the Billings, Billings Hospital right now, Billings clinic in Billings. Dear Father, would you be ministering to him and to Marlene this morning? 
Dear Father, we pray for Larissa Bowman, who is recovering from surgery for cancer. Dear Father, we, we pray these same things for her, that you'd be ministering to her, that you would be, that you would be reminding her of your presence with her today even. Dear Father, we pray for Dave Shear as he continues to undergo chemo treatments for strength for him and for Mary. Dear Father, we pray for Joe and Beth Bays. Lord, we pray for Bill up the Grove as he's at a camp for the blind. Over these next couple of weeks, we pray for, we pray for Barb. Dear Father, we pray for Bill as he continues to adjust to this, this whole different way of life. Your Lord, minister to him in strength today. Dear Father, we pray for those that are grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, we think of Joe Brummer. Dear Father, I'm so thankful that he's with us here today. As Kathy passed away here in the last couple of weeks, Lord, would you, would you be surrounding him with your arms of comforting strength and love this morning? Dear Father, I pray for Gary Peters, whose sister passed away. Lord, we, we really could go on and on. We lift all of these requests up to you. Dear Father, we praise you for the rain that we've had these past couple of weeks, Lord, even the past couple of days. Dear Father, I want to be so bold as to ask for more. And dear Father, you know what's best. You know what we need. We give you praise that you are the giver of every good gift. Dear Lord, this morning we pray for our high school graduates. We pray for our VBS preparations. We pray for Ty Johnson and his scout line as they continue to serve our country in the Navy. Dear Father, we pray for the churches of Broadwater County. Lord, may your word be proclaimed faithfully and clearly. May the gospel be preached boldly this morning in each of the churches in Broadwater County. Lord, this morning we want to pray for Doug Fortner as he is preaching your word in Canyon City, Colorado. Would you be ministering through him, to him, Lord, to his family? Dear Father, we praise you that all scripture is God-breathed and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man or woman of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Dear Father, would you continue to equip us for the good works that you have in store for us, for those works that have been planned before the foundation of the world? Dear Father, have your way in us as we look at this text today. Dear Father, would you speak clearly? Dear Lord, would you give me strength? Would you move me aside? And would you speak clearly? Help us to have ears to hear and ears to obey. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you, if you are here this morning, and you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you are a seed scatterer. Did you know that? If you are here today and you are trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are a seed scatterer. Did you know that? Raise your hand if you knew that already. Okay, raise your hand if you didn't know that. Okay, it's just good to... It's just good to get your arms moving a little bit. When I say that you are a seed scatterer, I'm not talking about physical seed. I'm talking about spiritual seed. If you are in Christ today, you are a scatterer of spiritual seed. As we work our way through this text this morning, there are five questions that I'm asking in regards to this text. And then the sixth question is, how do we apply 
this text to our lives, okay? The first question is this, what is a parable? Last week, Pastor Clay talked about the purpose of parables. This week, I wanted to share what a parable is. So literally, the word parable means to be thrown alongside of. And you think about Jesus telling stories. He was throwing along a story. That's what a parable is. It's a, it's a, it's a modern-day story that applied to real life. It, it was like Jesus threw alongside this truth in ways that people could understand. And like Pastor Clay said last week, some had ears to hear, but others didn't, right? The truth was concealed from, from some folks, but it was revealed to others. A parable was a story that was alongside real life, a real life situation to make a point. Normally, there was one main point for each parable. Core Christianity author Chuck Tedrick defined a parable this way. He said a parable is a story that tells us something about the king, about his kingdom, and his people. That's what a parable is. That's, that should be in your notes there. I think it's up there on the screen. A story that tells us something about the king, something about the kingdom, his kingdom, and something about his people. So now that we've got a little bit more of a foundation there regarding what a parable is, let's talk about what is a kingdom. Because I think sometimes when we talk about what a kingdom is, we might think back to medieval times, we might think about a king, we might think about soldiers, that kind of a thing. But what in the Bible, when the Bible talks about a kingdom, when it talks about God's kingdom, what is it talking about? Well, author, theologian, Anthony Hookema said this. The kingdom is simply the rule and reign of Christ that is already, but not yet. It's the rule and reign of Christ that is already, but not yet. It was inaugurated, it was, it, it was ushered in when Christ came the first time, when he came in human flesh. We see that all throughout the Gospels. Christ talked a lot about his kingdom. Many of the parables that we talk about this summer are going to be about this kingdom. Like I said, it, it was already ushered in by Christ when he came in the flesh, but it's not yet, the kingdom is not yet, because it'll be fully consummated when he returns. And how many of us aren't looking for that day and saying, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Bring your kingdom, bring it soon, right? So that's a little bit more about what the kingdom is. So we've talked about a parable and we've talked about a kingdom. The third question, actually I'm going to come back to in a little bit. I'm going to skip down to the fourth question. The fourth question is this. What is the seed in this text? Would you look with me please at verse 26? So chapter 4, verse 26. It says this, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps, sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The seed, he's talking about this seed, this sower that went out and scattered seed. So what is the seed? Well, if we looked earlier in chapter 4, we would see in verse 14 that the seed is the word of God. Would you look with me, please, at chapter 4, verse 14? 
it says this. The sower sows the word. That's talking about the parable of the soils. That's earlier in chapter 4. But the seed is the same here later in chapter 4. The seed is the word of God. I think probably most of us already knew that. But it's good to make sure that we're all on the same page. The seed is the word of God. And maybe even more specifically, it's the good news about Jesus Christ. The seed is the word of God, the good news about Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul says this, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. We, we see this at the end of the book of 1 Corinthians, and the Apostle Paul is returning to this good news about Jesus Christ, and he says, what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. This is what we really need to make sure we know. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. So what is the good news? Some of you might be asking, what is the good news about Jesus Christ? Well, first, we need to understand the bad news, right? We need to understand what the problem is. Why did we need the good news? Well, the problem was we were created for relationship with God, but our sin separated us from God. Once again, I realize I'm probably preaching to the choir, but it's good for us to make sure we're all on the same page with this, right? This is the problem. We all have inherited Adam and Eve's sin. And not only that, we choose to sin every day. There is sin that's present in our lives, right? I, I think that we all understand that. So, so that's the problem. We were created for a relationship with God, but our sin separated us from God. The good news about Jesus is that he died for the sins of all who are trusting him alone for eternal life. Jesus was fully God. He's fully man. The perfect sacrifice that allowed him to be the perfect sacrifice. He was the perfect mediator, scripture tells us, between God and man. This text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, tells us that he was buried. He was completely dead. Some of you are thinking about the movie Princess Bride, even as I say that, right? He's not just mostly dead. He was completely dead. He was laid in the tomb, right? He was buried. He was really dead. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 15, but then it says, he was raised on the third day, which means that God accepted his sacrifice. Did you realize that? When we celebrate the resurrection, we are celebrating that God accepted Christ's sacrifice for sin. Christ defeated the power of death. He defeated the power of the grave on behalf of all those who would trust him for salvation. All who repent and believe are reconciled. They're brought back in a right relationship with God. That's what it means to be reconciled, to be brought back into right relationship with our creator. This is the good news, brothers and sisters. My question for each of us today is this. Do we believe it? Do you believe it? If you don't believe it, my prayer is that you would repent and that you would believe the good news today, that today would be the day of salvation. So look with me, please, at verse 28. Verse 28 says this, The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. In other words, it grows to maturity. It grows to full maturity. So then question five in your notes is, what is verse 29 about? Would you look with me, please, 
at verse 29. It says this, but when the grain is ripe, and once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. The harvest has come. What is he talking about? He's talking here about judgment. But it's not judgment in the negative sense. It's judgment in the positive sense. It's it's referring to the believers that will be gathered to Christ in the last age, in the last day. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 9, verses 37 through 38 says this. Then he, Jesus, said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. In other words, you need to tell people about the good news of Jesus so that the harvest can be brought in. These are the believers that will be brought in. That's the harvest. So then we go back to question number three, and we're almost finished with these first five questions. Question number three is this. What is the point, if there is one main point to a parable, what is the main point of this particular parable? As I was thinking through this, studying through this text, D.A. Carson helped me, and I felt like the way that he said it was fantastic. I'm going to share what he said with you. The word contains generative power. The word contains generative power, causing the kingdom to grow steadily and surely in God's time and in God's way. Now, there's a lot that we need to think about as we think about what is he saying. The word contains generative power. I'm not, when it comes to mechanical stuff, ask anybody that that knows me even just a little bit, you know that I'm terrible with mechanical stuff. I can't tell the windshield wiper fluid from the, from the oil in your car. I mean, I, actually, I probably could, but, but, but I'm that, it's that bad. A couple of years ago, Brother Tom Elio said to me, you know, you maybe should get the oil changed in your mower. And I was like, huh, that's a different idea. Never really thought about that. That's how bad I am. But I do know this. If you go camping and you don't have an electrical source, you take a generator with you, right? Probably, probably normally you, you have an electrical source, but sometimes you don't. And some of you even have backup generators at your house. What does the generator do? The generator creates power for you, right? Am I right on that? Okay, I thought so. Like I said, I'm not very mechanical, so I, I'm, I'm walking on thin ice here, but the word contains generative power. That's what this parable is about. The kingdom, the word that contains this generative power causes the kingdom to grow steadily and surely in God's time and in God's way. This this is amazing truth. Amazing. The word contains the power to make alive what was dead. And if we are in Christ today, that's what happened. That's what happened in our lives. The word worked in our life, and we were born again. So we go to question number six. Six. Question number six. What can we take away from this parable? There are three truths that I want to make sure that we see today. The first one is this. Take heart. Christ's kingdom is growing. Don't tell me when you watch the news that you don't get discouraged like I do and think, God, 
what is going on? It seems like Satan is winning, doesn't it? But here is the truth. According to this parable, the kingdom is growing. That just gets me really excited. Take heart, believer. Take heart, brother or sister. We might think times are bad now, but the kingdom is growing around the world. Around the world. And you might say, well, how do you know that? How can you tell that? Well, you know what? Just a few of the brief experiences we've had in the last couple of weeks, I can tell you the kingdom is growing and I'm going to trash my voice. But you know what? It's okay. Because we need to understand and we need to find hope in this truth. I, I think about our trip to Mexico and I think about the believers that we were able to worship with there. We had no idea what we were singing, but we knew that it was good. Actually, we might have had some idea. We're singing about the Lord. We're singing about his power. We're, we're singing about the redemption that Christ came to bring us. That's what we were singing about. And we were with 175 other believers down there in their church, worshiping the Lord. We think about believers like Pastor Sincere and that place ministry works through in Haiti. We think about Nick Petrusha, who is our missionary with Chi Alpha, right? Who is over in the Middle East. Even in the last month, meeting with believers there. I think about the work of Vision Beyond Borders that John Carlton does, right? Brothers and sisters, we need to hear this today. Take heart. The kingdom is growing. That's what this parable tells us. Do you believe God's word? Christ's kingdom is growing, and it will continue to grow until the day that he returns. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 through 10 says this, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with white branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne. And to the Lamb. Did you hear that? The kingdom is growing. There will be people from every tribe and every tongue and every nation gathered around the throne. I pray that I might have a place next to some of our Mexican brothers and sisters down there. I mean, up there. You know what I mean, right? That was a slip. Strike that from the record, please. This is the thing. Christ promised that this would happen. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, ver the second part, it says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Brothers and sisters, take hope. The gates of hell themselves will not prevail against his kingdom against his church. So brothers and sisters, take heart. Christ's kingdom is growing. The second truth I want to make sure that we see, be confident in the power of the word. Dear Lord, give me strength to make these last couple points. Be confident in the power of the word. This week, this week, I read this quote on Facebook. Just a second. I read, I read this quote on Facebook. Tip your server. Return your shopping cart. Pick up a piece of trash. Hold the door for the person behind you. Let someone into your lane. Small acts can have a ripple effect. That's how we change the world. As I read that quote, my heart screamed, no! No. 
That's how it changes the world. Those are all good things. In fact, I enjoy doing every one of them. Sometimes. These are all good things, but they cannot change the human heart. Do you see that? Tipping your server, letting someone into your lane, it can't change the heart. It it might motivate some good behavior for a time, but it's not going to change the internal. It's not going to change the heart. It's been said It's been said the heart of the human condition is the condition of the human heart. What's what's the condition of the human heart? The condition of the human heart is that we're sinful. The book of Jeremiah tells us our heart is sinful beyond all else and is desperately sick. Scripture Scripture tells us that it's the word that has power. It's the word that has power. It's the word that changes a person's heart. Not not tipping your server, as, as great as that is. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 10 and 11 says this, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bear forth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Do you hear that power? It will go out from his mouth. It will accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. It will. That's not a question. There is no possibly there. It's a guarantee. It's the word that's living and active that's sharper than a double-edged sword. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 tells us. 1 Peter chapter 1 puts it this way, verse 22 through 25. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, Love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, you have been born again. If you are trusting Jesus Christ, this is how it happened. This is what Peter is telling us. Not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. This is how you were born again. Through the generative power of the word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news. There it is, that good news that was preached to you. The word, the word causes hearts to be born again, to be brought from death to life. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, says this, So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. The word has the power, brothers and sisters. Are you wondering what you should say to that unbelieving coworker, that unbelieving neighbor, that unbelieving family member, that unbelieving you fill in the blank? Are you wondering what you should say to him? Start with the word! What a great idea, right? I know, once again, I'm preaching to the choir, but, but sometimes do we forget that? Do we forget that it can be that simple? Share the word. Share the good news of Jesus Christ. The word has the power. Be confident in that. So, so take heart. Christ's kingdom is growing. Be confident in the power of the word. And, and number three is this. Enjoy the privilege and responsibility of scattering the seed. This is it. This is it. Enjoy the privilege and responsibility of scattering the seed. I think that we all know that God is the one who creates new life and growth through his word, through the seed. 
And we see that in this parable. We see that in verse 27. He sleeps and rises them. And it says here, look, at, look, look with me at verse 27. It says, he sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. In other words, it's not the man's responsibility to create that growth. That's God. That's God's responsibility. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the apostle Paul said, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God makes it grow. God's the one who gives the growth. God's the one who gives the increase. So, so God is the one who creates new life and growth through his word, through the seed. But we, we have the privilege of being used by him in scattering that seed. We have the privilege of sharing his word with others. That's our role. That's our responsibility. That's our privilege. Our role is to be faithful in scattering the seed, sharing the word. This is a privilege that we didn't earn. It's a privilege that's ours because we're in Christ. Scattering the seed is something that we get to do because we have been united with Christ. I want you to take note of one thing here. When we think about the word scattering, that's very, very different than planting. Do you hear the difference there? Scattering? You see that? You see what I did? I scattered. Now watch this. Planting. Do you see the difference there? The scattering is very indiscriminate. Right? The scattering goes all over the place. That's different. That's different than here. I'm going to plant something here. And then I'm going to plant something here. And then I'm going to plant something here. But how many of us are a little more discriminate with who we feel we should share the word with? I think that's a good question. We need to be faithful to keep scattering the seed indiscriminately to as many people as we are able, even if we think there's no way a particular person will respond, right? Right? I, I didn't get much of a response there, right? Scatter the seed indiscriminately. We don't know. We do not know by looking at a particular person whether or not the Lord is working in their heart. Think about this. How many times did you need to hear the gospel before you were saved? I mean, think about it. I, I, I don't even know. It's probably countless times that I heard the gospel before I started to understand it. Just recently, I heard a story about a pastor who visited a lady 17 different times times without any any response without any response from this lady there were no visible results but the pastor didn't give up you would think after 17 times the pastor might have lost count or he might have just given up but he didn't and she finally trusted the lord as her savior on the 18th trip So scattering the seed is a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. It's a responsibility of ours as believers. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20 says this, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses, 
against them. Here's the gospel. Here it is. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. If we are in Christ, we are his ambassadors. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. If you are struggling with what message to proclaim, there it is. There it is in these verses, and it gets even clearer in verse 21. It goes even further to help us understand what the seed is that we are to scatter as his ambassadors. Listen to this. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. There it is again in a nutshell. That's the gospel. God made him, Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. So then in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the seed that we are to scatter. Therefore, I want to conclude this message with this challenge for each of us. Would you pray? Would you pray with me that the Lord would help us to see the opportunities he gives us to scatter the seed and pray that we would be faithful. Would you do that with me? Let's pray. Dear Father, we are so thankful for the reminder of the truth that your kingdom is growing. Dear Father, we may not see it, We may not understand it, but this is the truth. Dear Father, we pray that we would take heart today, that we would be encouraged with that truth today. Dear Father, we pray that we would be encouraged with the truth that we are your ambassadors. We've got good news to share. We've got good seed to scatter. So dear Father, we pray that we would be faithful and as your seed scatters. Your Father, we praise you for that privilege that it is. We praise you for the responsibility that you've given us. Once again, we pray that we would be faithful, even as, even as our joy is found in the completed work of Christ. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that clear word, Pastor Mark. We're going to respond and end our service by singing. Jesus, thank you. Would you stand with us as we do that this morning?
Before I invite you to receive the benediction, just a quick reminder that the chili cook-off, I had to think there for a moment, what, what's that soup called again? It, it's chili. It's chili. The chili cook-off is taking place immediately after the service here. You are all welcome to stay with us and just enjoy some fellowship. I'm going to attempt to give you the benediction now. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. May God bless you as you go. You're dismissed. Thank you.